Welcome to our tutorial about control events. After we add controls to a form, we need these controls to interact with one another, with the user, or with the system. Now, in order to initiate this interaction, there needs to be an event that triggers this. For example, a mouse click, a double click, a mouse down, or a mouse up, and so on. There are many different kinds of events. After this event occurs, the code written inside the event is executed. To see event procedures, double click on our Yes button. There is no code inside the event yet, but here we see the shell of the event. The shell is otherwise known as wrapper lines. The first line is the beginning of the event. The last line is the end of the event. After we write some code inside this event, we have what's known as a block, or a section of code that goes together in a single unit. Most event procedures begin with the statement private sub. Then comes the control name, underscore, and the name of the event. Click in my case. Then a set of parentheses. Some procedures require values inside the parentheses, but others don't. Even if nothing is required inside the parentheses, the parentheses still stay. On the left side drop down menu, we see the objects or controls that we've got in our project. On the right side drop down menu are a number of events that can be assigned to these controls, for example, mouse down. Finally, there is the closing set of wrapper lines in our code. If I select a different object from this drop down menu, a default event will automatically be assigned to this object from the right side drop down menu. The same thing happens if I double click on the object. Once again, I see only the shell representing the beginning and end of my event. Next comes the code for the action that should be executed by this event. This concludes our tutorial about control events.